Well, I'm on my way to the border right now. It's going to be nip and tuck for Whispering Song uh, for me to drive her today. Um, it was Addie's first day of school ever, first day on the bus, and, and um, I wanted to make sure I saw it, so I told her I'd take her down to the bus stop today. Uh, I get underway around 8.30. Now, in fairness, I thought it was a little longer drive to Delaware County Fairgrounds. It's not. It's five and a bit. I thought it was a bit over six to uh, to the fairgrounds. So it looks like I might be able to make it. I don't know yet. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight to make it. But it is what it is. Uh, man, what a... Uh, I got all your videos done. What a crazy, crazy time it is right now. I forget every year I know that... I tell everybody that sale season is a busy time. It's not just a busy time, it's a chaotic time. You know, factoring, we now have a horse racing and a little brown jug. Yes, Atlas Hanover is going to be a long shot, but long shots do win and draw post position is going to play a big role in, uh, in the race. I did offer the drive to James first and foremost. He can't come. Uh, they have stake races Thursday at Mohawk, and he opted to stay there. I'll drive out to Santa At least I'll, I told Jason, you can list me to drive for now. The thing is, you know, Tim Tietrich and, and uh, Dexter Dunn and Todd and Andy McCarthy, all those guys have drives, right? None of them are going to show up and just sit by the fence and tap their whip, right? It's just, it's not the way it is. If they're there, they're there to drive a horse. So asking somebody, getting somebody, sure, Brett Miller is going to be there, Dave Miller, all those guys will be there too. Um, you know, I trained the horse the other day. I like him too. So we'll see how it plays out with the Little Brown Jug on Thursday. First and foremost, you know what, guys? It's not very often you get the race in the jug. It's very rare that you buy a horse and uh, a week later get the race in the jug, especially for what we bought this guy for. Uh, all things considered, after watching him, after seeing him train, sitting behind him, training him, um, you know, talking to the people that knew him. And, and looking at the horse, I, I think what we bought him for was honestly well below what, what they should have and could have got for him. So in that regard, I think, I don't want to say we were lucky. It's a lot of money. But at the same token, uh, it looks good. It looks favorable at this moment from where I stand. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Crantini this week, racing for a million dollars, a huge, a huge week for us. Two of the biggest races in North America, and we're in both of them this week. Uh, I had dinner last night with Scotty and Megan in Ontario, both Scotty, Scott, for those of you that don't know, Scott Zeron is from Ontario, so he's staying with his parents, him and Megan are staying with his parents right now, and Megan, I walked into the barn yesterday at, at uh, I don't know, 10.30, something like that, on a Sunday, and there was Megan sitting beside Crantini about to put him on the nebulizer, we left right at the same, right at the same time Megan did, so, um, you know, it's nice to see somebody take their job so seriously. And not that other people don't, but it just, you know, she didn't sit there because she knew I was in Ontario, right? She didn't go to the barn because she knew I was there. She did it because she takes her job seriously. And it, it's a breath of fresh air to work with such um, driven people, right? Um, so Crantini looks like a million dollars. Obviously, I got to look at Carter, Michael Dio, and Spitfire Overseas. They both look very, very sharp. They're training this week. We a ton of qualifiers, ton of horses racing today here, Ontario. Just so much going on. And then, well, by the way, my job is also to take a look at the buckets. And every year this time, we have people looking to trade up and move around shares. The buckets are about to open today. My apologies. I didn't realize they weren't open yet. The site provider, Eric, our site, our, 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 the administrator of our site, didn't have a chance to open them yesterday or Saturday, and I didn't realize that they were actually ready to be opened. Um, they'll be done this afternoon. I, my apologies for that. I, I guess I kind of dropped the ball on that. Now, I will tell everybody we did, as we normally do, keep some shares back for everybody. So not just the 11 and 17 that were available to our, our uh, clients that had bought the buckets, but there are some shares available otherwise. And I wanted to make sure that was important. You know, I know for those of you out there that wanted to pick your own horse or, you know, didn't get involved in the buckets for whatever reason, that's fine. I have no problem with that. We were we were more than subscribed uh, for a comfort level for us, for Ohio and for Lexington. And we did keep some shares back for everybody. Last year, it was the first year ever where people were coming to us and saying, hey, there's no horses for sale on the site. New clients. 
couldn't get in. Uh, a little little piece of information. Now I am this week because I'm back and forth to Delaware. Uh, this week I will have time to write a blog, and I am going to write one about the importance of fractional ownership. A little stat out there, and I didn't know Wendy was keeping track of this. I didn't want to ask her because she was super busy herself. We have added 15 brand new clients to the stable.ca since September 5th. 15. And they appear to be coming in daily. That's because people see what we're doing, they see what we're, what, what, what we've done in the past, where we're heading, what we're trying to do for the industry, and they want to be a part of it. And these aren't just little owners also. These aren't, not all these people are one, two percent owners. In fact, we added a very major owner yesterday. Now, let me preface that by saying he didn't get involved because he wants to be a part of the stable per se. He got involved because he wanted to buy a piece of a horse. And I couldn't even get him that piece of a horse. But he bought a piece of a different horse. Which was pretty interesting in its own right. And that's not to say that that having big owners is better than smaller owners. The group that we have com compiled is impressive. Right? It's a wide swath. You know, people from all different walks of life. Ethnicities. Financial situations. Backgrounds. And this is important because we want to show people... This is possible. Not only is it possible, but we prove it every single day. I don't know if there'd be anybody else in horse racing that has garnered 15 new clients since September 5th. What we're doing is important. And that, that is the message of the day for this industry. And it needs to be out there. So, uh, aside from messaging and, and all the other stuff going on with the stable, what's going on with you? So, as I said, the buckets, we will have some shares available for um, for some people. And there were shares that I had kept for myself because I, I want to be a part too. But I won't leave anybody out in the cold if I can. So, if, if there's people out there looking for shares, I'll make mine available too if I have to. So, a lot went on with the... With the uh, with the Ohio sale obviously we're trying to transfer we're trying to move from the Ohio sale open it up and then close it move racing all this week which is going to be a huge 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 week for the stable but at the same time quietly looking at at putting Lexington together putting it to bed I'm going to be reaching out to all our clients that, that do have lots in those buckets and saying this is what you want for sure because this is a big deal Lexington's a, a big chunk of money. I want to make sure that, and I am going to try and keep shares back for everybody. I, I don't know if I can keep, you know, 20 or 25 back because that's a lot of money for me to carry and hope. Again, hope is wonderful, but it, it costs a lot of money. So um, if there's people out there that, that want to be a part of that, let me know. And then obviously, uh, as we get into the fall, you know, I meant to, um, just from Understanding our role, your role, and everybody's role associated with the stable, you know, we had to build a new contract. We try to, every year or two or three, we try to build a contract that makes more sense for us in real time. What does the stable need to have in print so that one, we're protected, and two, you're protected, and everybody knows the role moving forward. And uh, God bless him, before, before the passing of uh, Bob Burgess, he was uh, just... One, a, a very, very nice man, very smart man, and uh, a man that really helped us with the stable. In fact, one of the best horses we ever had, one of the first good horses we had, and a horse that really put us on the map, Lawmaker, was Bob Burgess's horse. So the first horse that we actually, first real quality horse, I guess in hindsight at least, um, that really put us on the map was a was privately sent to us by Bob Burgess. So Bob Burgess meant a lot to the stable. Uh, he'll always be cemented in where we came from and where we get to uh, in a lot of his direction. A lot of his direction, um, both as a horse person and as a lawyer, will be present in what we do moving forward. So the contracts, it's, it's nothing new. It's an extension of what we already have. Uh, I doubt it will be new to anybody, but we want to make sure that it gets out there. And we'll probably drop that... Uh, I thought we'd have a drop last January, but we've been working on it, working on it behind the scenes, and 
trying to make sure I've, I've uh, had a couple of our clients look at it and say, does this, is this clear? Does this look good to you? Is this what we're trying to say? And, um, and, and they were a very big help to a sounding board, if you will, for everybody. So I guess that will likely be dropped mid-October, I guess. Um, so we're, we're trying to put the finishing touches on that. I'm waiting to hear back from uh, a couple of people, one of them being a lawyer, um, about that just to make sure everything is right and it sounds right because what I have in my head obviously may not be what, what is in print. So um, there's that. Then we're obviously, as we go through all the fall, it ends with another big sale in Harrisburg. Now, each year it seems like Harrisburg turns into, as we get closer to it, man, we spent a lot of money in Ohio and Lexington. You know, we bought some horses in Ontario. What do we have left for Harrisburg? And then it turns into this whole other entity of it uh, upon itself where it's like this new wave where we're now talking to new people and other people to put together, you know, I don't want anybody stretching themselves uh, to buy horses with us. That is not what the stable is about. It should always be about, you know, discretionary funds and, and disposable income and having fun. You know, sure, you guys look at me and I'm stressed out sometimes and I'm trying to make sure that we're going in the right, right direction, but that's me, the guy who runs the stable. That shouldn't be you. It should always be about um, having the best time you can in horse racing. That's what it always should be about. Always. And sometimes that's lost on me also. And as we go into the fall, that will be tested as we start to sell some of our sophomores. I had uh, spoke to our clients last night that own Slim Jimmy. I believe Slim Jimmy will be put up for sale in the next preferred sale. I like Slim Jimmy. But the only problem I have with Slim Jimmy is Guido D is a better horse right now. And a couple other horses are tough too. Jimmy's not without his hurdles that he has to go through on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. And heading into the consolation, heading into the, uh, the, the Stallion Series final and the races in Indiana, you know, he's going to be faced with adversity a lot more than he's used to. But at the same token, he's a good horse. So his wins are a little bit less he fits into that mold where we could keep him, but we did have a couple of clients that are, are fairly major stakeholders in Slim Jimmy that said, hey, it would be nice for to put some, put together some more yearling capital, and that's what we get into, and that is the slippery slope that I'm in, is trying to balance what's best for the stable opposed from the business side of the stable, the client side of the stable. It's, it's always that give and take, like that... As I said, it's it's quite a balancing act sometimes. As you guys know, and I, and I hope you appreciate it. So as I drive along here, um, I'm left thinking about what we did this weekend at the, at the Ohio sale, the shares that are going to be up. I did. You know, for those of you that think that the buckets are just a way for Anthony to, you know, sell all the shares pre and everybody gets left out, that is what I did. I kept a number of shares back for our clients because I do recognize and I will continue to make sure that we move forward in a way that everybody, all of you watching this video, are represented. It has to be the way forward for all of us. And it's not easy. I, I hope you recognize that it's not easy. My biggest fear is waking up and having all these shares left on the site and nobody buying them. But that's not actually the biggest fear. My biggest fear was last year when we sold them all out and there was none to buy. So I'm trying to, I'm left trying to keep enough milk in the fridge for people to buy. Not enough milk that I can't afford. So that's where, that's where I'm at right now. So as we head into Harrisburg, um, you know, I will be making calls to people. Hey, would you want to be involved? Theoretically, if there was five shares of, of these horses left, it wouldn't be a big deal. So that, that's where I'm headed with this. And uh, I hope everybody gets what they want. I hope everybody is comfortable and happy heading into the fall. Obviously, the, the elephant in the room, the biggest thing that I'm left doing is trying to balance two stables in two countries now, two massive stables. Before, it was just keeping the doors open and the heat on in Ohio until we got back. Now, it's we moved out of Tomiko. We have, will have 50 to 60 stalls all winter long at Mohawk. We want to keep some racehorses there. Definitely keep our Ontario babies there and some other babies there. What will that look like? James is already committed to coming back. Danny O'Brien is there. Johnny is there. These are people that helped us with the babies last year. The training of them isn't going to be that hard. Now, 
They haven't talked to Joe yet about having a drone there. I am certain with all the stables that are at first line, they are not going to be very happy about having a drone flying around when they're trying to train their babies. So the drone might have to be up a little bit higher, which I'm sure is fine. Uh, we did that a couple of times when Curtis couldn't go and his, his uh, uh, one of his camera guys that he works with did the drone a few times. Now in Northfield, it'll be a little bit different. Uh, our camera guy will be there. So that will be interesting in its own right. We're going to continue to try and find the best way forward for everybody. And listen, guys, eventually, someday, the stable will have its own farm or farms. But as I built the stable, I'm going to continue on in the safest way I can, which is baby steps, financial baby steps. When it comes to buying horses, we've made big leaps and bounds. But when you're talking about buying land and building barns, that's outside Anthony's depth. And that's something that we can talk about. I know somebody said to me the other day, why didn't you just buy Tomiko? Well, they wanted a lot of money for it. It's going to have a lot of money. Uh, there needs to be a lot of money put in it to, to, for upkeep. And I, I just, I couldn't justify it. So, I mean, these are all things that are rattling around in my head. I need one side of my brain is taken care of today, tomorrow, and the next day. Or the other side of my brain is looking at five, ten years down the road for the stable. It's not something I'm used to. It's something that, thankfully, because we have so many really good, uh, really good clients that you've helped me do, and you can tell, you continue to help me do, and I truly appreciate that on a whole other level. Um, just a lot going on with the stable. You guys, for those of you that have been apart from the start, or for for quite some time, I can think of a couple of people that were with us when we were at the original training center. Many of you may think that we started the stable at Tomiko, and that's not the case. Just down the street a mile away is where we actually started the stable. And we grew quite quickly and had to move up to Tomiko. So as we grow together as a group and move forward, I want everybody to know that as much as you have my back, I have yours. I'm trying to do the best I can for everybody um, so that we have the best and are the best stable.ca that anybody could have. We set an example for the trainers that could want and should want to have fractional ownership entities in their barn or, or make their barn transition into an entire fractional ownership stable. That's up to them. I want jurisdictions to look at what we did and understand the worth of of fractional ownership, not just for horse flesh, but for trainers and for their fans, their dwindling fan bases also. I want the stable.ca. I always have, I still do, and more now than ever, want the stable.ca to be a beacon for this industry. So for people to look and say, well, he did it, why can't I? Or that's something we should help grow and foster in our jurisdiction. So that's where we're at. Uh, again, I like to end the week and start the week off with uh, telling everybody how how um, happy I am with the way the sale went, obviously, and, and their participation. Depending on how you look at your week, we ended it strong with a first, second, and third yesterday. Very, very happy for Lauren Herman. She drove Walk on the Moon great. The horse was a winner in Delaware. Um, Purple Aura raced great. Not how we usually see Purple Aura race. So showing a little versatility, good for her. And Slim Jimmy raced very, very good. Very valiant effort in a third place finish. Also in the, the Buckeye, as worth noting, the other two divisions, I believe, went three full seconds slower than Slim Jimmy's. So um, that, didn't, that wasn't lost on me also. Today we have a number of horses in all throughout the week. This is going to be a big, big week for us. A lot coming up, a lot going on. Thank you all very much again. I'll talk to you all very soon.